Muslim extremism seemed to show its ugly face in then unprecedented fashion on February 26, 1993. A truck bomb had gone off in the parking area of the World Trade Center. Luckily, the bombers failed to follow instructions and parked the truck carrying the explosives against the main support column. What is not discussed, however, is the bomb was actually built by an FBI informant under the supervision of the FBI. Ahmed Salam, a former Egyptian army officer who had been doing undercover work for the FBI, was the man who actually built the bomb. When he was told that he would have to use real bomb-making material instead of harmless substitutes, he became suspicious and began taping his conversations with FBI officials. Last winter, the FBI was praised for its speed in cracking the case of the World Trade Center bombing and bringing four suspects to trial. Now, there is some evidence that the FBI may have known of the plot in advance through an informant and might, might even have stopped the bombing that killed six people. Notice the media emphasizes that they might have been able to stop it. They then gloss over the fact that the bomb was built by their agent under FBI supervision in conjunction with the district attorney. FBI agents might have been able to prevent last February's deadly explosion at New York's World Trade Center. They discussed secretly substituting harmless powder for the explosives, but they didn't, according to the FBI's own informant, Imad Salem. Unbeknownst to the FBI at the time, Salem recorded many of his conversations with his handlers. The actual recording where Salam discusses this with his FBI handler, John Antisev, was released years after the trial. You got paid regularly for, for good information. I mean, the expenses were a little bit out of the ordinary, and it was really questioned. Don't tell Nancy I told you this. Well, I have to tell her, of course. Well, then if you have to, you have to. Yeah, because, I mean, the lady was being honest, and I was being honest, and everything was submitted with a receipt. Yeah. Right. And now it's questionable. It's not questionable, it's like a little out of ordinary. Okay. You know, that's all right. I don't think it was, if that's what you think, guys, fine. But I don't think that because we was start already building the bomb, which is went off in the World Trade Center. It was built by uh, 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 supervising uh, supervision from the Bureau and the GA. And we was all informed about it, and we know that the bomb start to be built. By who? By your confidential informant. What a wonderful, great case. Following the convictions of the Muslims who were too inept to make their own bomb and park the vehicle in the proper area, Salam was pulled into the FBI's witness protection program, where he has never been heard from again. Prior to the largest and most devastating terrorist attack on U.S. soil, the United States was poised as the first truly global superpower. Brzezinski would muse in 1997 that geostrategic success would represent a fitting legacy of America's role as the first, only, and last truly global superpower and that the only way to mobilize Americans was a truly massive and widely perceived direct external threat. In September of 2000, a neoconservative think tank called the Project for a New American Century echoed Brzezinski's statements, saying the United States is the world's only superpower, combining preeminent military power, global technological leadership, and the world's largest economy. An engine for New World Order ideals, members of PNAC included Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, Jeb Bush, Scooter Libby, William Crystal, and Paul Wolfowitz. Describing the difficulty in projecting force, they write the process of transformation is likely to be a long one, absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event, like a new Pearl Harbor. This takes us full circle to the September 11th attacks of 2001. In my previous film, Fabled Enemies, I expose in great detail the Saudi Arabian, Pakistani and Israeli connections in conjunction with this international intelligence operation. In the early 1980s, bin Laden worked with operatives from U.S. intelligence, the Pakistani military, and Arab states. They ran a wide-ranging covert network that recruited and financed Muslim fighters to battle the Soviet army. The hijackers that were trained at U.S. military installations and protected by the FBI and CIA the military exercises leading up to 9-11 and those that took place as the attacks occurred. 
Open line. Command, Sergeant Richmond. Sergeant Richmond, Sergeant Lake from Cheyenne Mountain Test Control. How are you? I'm doing fine. Okay, I need you to terminate all exercise inputs coming to Cheyenne Mountain at this time. Copy. And uh, stay on loop until I verify that you just for connectivity is disconnected on the exercise side only. Okay, no, do not do any more inputs on the exercise side and stand by. I got Cheyenne Mountain on the line. Terminating all exercise inputs. So, Rover, if you didn't know this uh, exercise. Oh, yes. The Black Ops Program, Able Danger, and the Shadow Government Involvement. This morning we learned that the Vice President wasn't the only one sent to an undisclosed location on September 11th, that an entire backup government was and is still there and may be there for as long as anyone now at least can imagine. As well as much, much more, the government has lied about 9-11 repeatedly and used it to dominate the Middle East while creating an evolving police state here, encroaching on civil liberties at home. And of course, building a new world order. There is a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out what his father, a phrase his father used I think only once, and hasn't been used since, and that is a new world order.